This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The one that everybody wants, me. Austin 316 says I just whipped your ass. This is my iron. You're going to acknowledge me. All right, everybody. Welcome to the WWE Podcast Mailbag. It's episode 139 here on this Wednesday, June 28th, 2023. Time to hear from you as we creep closer and closer to the Money in the Bank event that comes to you live 3 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday, or rather Saturday, excuse me. And that full prediction show will be available here on the podcast tomorrow night with co-host Thomas White, who has been on the show before, a YouTuber, and uh, had a lot of fun the last time. And he'll be here tomorrow night to talk about all of his thoughts on the event. So don't miss it. All right. Let's just jump into it. So, patrons, what you got for me? Let's, uh, all righty. Let's talk to, let's talk to Frank. Frank says, hey, this is Frank again. First, I wanted to say, why is with Logan Paul, why is it Logan Paul's getting a shot for money in the bank? Second, why did they unify the women's tag team championship belts and they didn't bring both belts to the ring on Raw? Is that more like a joke? Okay. (laughs) For Logan Paul, I've gone over this a little bit before. He's... I think here to improve the matchup from just a wrestling perspective. He also brings eyeballs to the product with his 25 million YouTube subscribers. uh, Even if a small fraction of them tune in, it's a win. And so that's not going to hurt that he's involved in, in uh, bringing over some of his audience on top of the fact that he is a good, he's a good in ring performer. He just is love him or hate him. He busts his ass. He's taking some crazy bumps. And he's there to improve the match and also kind of scare people. And that's why he's there. He's scaring people away from maybe believing that LA Knight is a slam dunk for this match. Okay, second, why did they unify the women's tag team championship belts and didn't bring both belts to Raw? I don't know. Maybe they forgot one set. Which is why anytime you unify belts, you need to just represent them physically as one belt. Why it takes a year to you know, unify the championships physically like Roman Reigns and you know, not, you know, you tell everybody it's a unified championship and then it takes you a year to actually show a unified championship belt physically. It makes no sense. At the same time, Roman Reigns is still carrying around three belts. Now to him, it was just an addition. It wasn't a replacement. It was an addition, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, but I don't know why they did. Uh, okay, I feel like Drew McIntyre, Randy, and Big E need to show up. And I feel, finally feel, the Roman and Solo have no way of winning against the Usos with as much hatred for the Usos uh, they have as they have for Roman and Solo. Okay, well, first of all, Drew, Randy, and or- Drew, Orton, and Big E. All of these men certainly have a chance of returning at Money in the Bank. I'll get to my official predictions tomorrow, so I'm going to have to leave you hanging on that of who could possibly or who's the most likely to show up. But as far as the Usos not winning against Roman and Solo, I don't think there's no way they could win. Why wouldn't they be able to? I mean, this this is a program that's going to go on for a long time. At least a couple of, you know, when I say a long time, probably at least two more matches. So why can't they? I mean, Roman Reigns is not going to be the one, if they lose a match in this series, is not going to be the one to take the pinfall so he can continue to claim he hasn't been pinned or submitted since December of 2019. But... It's, I think it's leaning likely that Roman and Solo do take this match. So, thanks, Frank. Let's get to the Grim Reefer. Great patron. He says, hey, WWE Podcast, it's been a while since I've messaged, and I found time on the train to go see a live WWE Live in Liverpool to get my predictions in for Money in the Bank. So, here we go. Women's Money in the Bank, I'm going with Zelina Vega. Wow. Dark horse pick. Dark horse pick, Grim. Men's Money in the Bank. I'm going L.A. Knight. Yeah. Nice pick. Cody Rhodes versus X-Con Dom or Dirty Dom or take your pick, right? I'm going X-Con Dom to win via interference from Brock. 
I think that's kind of the general consensus as well. The Bloodline Civil War. I'm going Roman and Solo win. There'll be a ref bump and shenanigans. WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I'm going Seth freaking Rollins to win. Clean. The only clean finish of the night. Uh, WWE Live in one hour. Not sure what to expect as it's usually branded, but this is just advertised as live. Hopefully I'll get some practice Money in the Bank matches. Also got the Undertaker's Dead Man show on Monday in Manchester. Man, it's great when wrestling's in town. Stay fly. Well, I'm jealous, Grim. You get to see Taker, the dead man, on his uh, his 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 one man show. That you have to let me know what he let me know what is said in those events. I'm very curious what stories he tells, how, how uh, you know he pulls back the curtain as he's done since he retired. That kind of stuff is just so interesting to me because there's so much that he has yet to share. I think still. And uh, as far as you. Uh, you know, your, your picks, it's hard for me to comment on some of these because I'm trying not to uh, bury the lead and give you guys my predictions and then not tune in tomorrow night. See, see my strategy. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, so we got another great patron here, uh, Dr. BGB. He says he's back and better than ever because it's PLE week, which means it's the return of the casual wrestling cl- crew and the it couple themselves. Well, I, I I have uh, bad news. Okay, uh, they they taking a bit of a a break from the mailbag. They have some personal things going on, but they're going to try to resume at some point soon the Good Morning WWE show. Um, I'm sure everyone was super excited to hear me do these emails and not miss some Mrs. Casual Wrestling fan, you know, because I um you know I'm certainly an upgrade and I say that extremely sarcastically. <laughs> uh, I know. Hey, I want them here as much as you do, but sometimes life takes over, man. And uh, so that's that's what it is. First thing I want to mention is next town hall meeting. I would love the chance to come on and talk about our Mount Rushmore of WWE stars of all time. All right. Now down to current business. All I got to say is I will riot if LA Knight doesn't win because of the briefcase because the briefcase is something he needs. It will match his persona perfectly and let him hold it for eight months before he cashes in. Now, I agree, Dr. BGB here, but here's what I would prefer that they do not have LA Knight carry it around like it's his firstborn child that he needs to carry around all the time. Why? Because we don't need to be constantly reminded that, Oh, that's right. That's right. He has the briefcase. Wouldn't it be more fun for him to carry the briefcase kind of metaphorically? And when it's time to cash in, that's when you have him physically bring out the case because if we're constantly reminded, I think the surprise element goes away. Because I can guarantee you in four, five, six months, people kind of, they won't forget, but it's not at the forefront that he's Mr. Money in the Bank. And then when he comes out and holds the briefcase, you're like, oh my God, that's right. But if he's constantly in every entrance and everything he does and is carries the briefcase around, I think that is taking the element of surprise away because it's always now going to be at the forefront of your mind. And that's just my personal opinion about that. Um, Okay, for the women's, I could see Zelina Vega winning and having the first ever failed women's cash in. Possible. I don't think Zelina's a favorite, but certainly possible. All right, next up, Cody and Dom giving the hottest teal in the company, Dominic Mysterio, winning by a Brock Lesnar interference. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus Pretty Deadly. Give me Sami and KO, no question here. That's a lock. Seth and Finn give me Seth freaking Rollins. I could see Priest trying to help Balor and end up costing him the match. And last but not least, the Battle of the Bloodline, the Civil War. Roman and Solo versus the Usos. Give me Roman and Solo for the win. With Paul Heyman getting involved somehow, uh, anyways, that's all I got. This has been one of a kind, Doctor of the WWE Podcast, signing off to the TakeOver crew members and have a blessed week. Until next time. All right. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it, and let's see here. We're going to get to, because my computer has been acting kind of funny with my business email. i got to go to my phone here. Uh, let's uh, let's go to D- uh, DJ Kuzmo, and he says, Hello, WWE and AEW Podcast World. This is DJ Kuzmo back at it again. As I'm typing this email, I'm not sure if Matt is hosting. Well, I guess you, you got your answer. Anyway, whoever's hosting the show, I have one question to ask before my predictions, and that is, where is Omos? Because I remember around this time last year, he was in Money in the Bank, the ladder match, 
And since his loss to Seth at uh, Rollins at Backlash, we haven't seen him. Kind of odd. Yeah, I don't know. I actually haven't thought about Omos at all. Is, is that an indictment of Omos or myself? I don't know. Omos is just, um, from what I understand, he's still just kind of, he's not injured, but I guess he's uh, just in waiting. <laughs> I I don't, I haven't heard much more than that. So it's possible he returns. What, what if he returns and costs somebody at Money in the Bank? I mean, what about LA Knight? Maybe he costs LA Knight. Anyway, let's get into Kuzmo's WWE Money in the Bank predictions or spoilers. Gunther versus Matt Riddle. I'm booking that Gunther will retain his IC championship because there's no way that Gunther drops the belt this soon, but probably the later, the latter, so stay tuned. Cody Rhodes and Dom, <clears throat> this match could go either way, but I'm booking that Cody will get the win here and probably move on to part three against Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. Plus, according to a report, Brock is slated to return back on Monday Night Raw after Money in the Bank, so stay tuned. Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor, a highly competitive match. I'm booking Rollins retains the title, but after the match, we get the return. The return of a heel, Drew McIntyre, as he steps into the ring to have a brief face-off with Rollins. But what will happen next? Stay tuned. A lot of stay tunes. we got to stay tuned for a lot of stuff, don't we? Uh, Ronda and Shayna versus Raquel and Back Dimples, <laughs> a.k.a. Back Dimples. <laughs> Liv Morgan, yeah, I guess that's what it is. Maybe we'll just start calling her Back Dimples. I don't know why she's so impressed with her back. Did, did somebody at one point just give her a compliment one time and she just ran with it? Like, wow, your back looks really toned. And she's like, you know, it just it just imprinted on her brain forever. And she's like, I should make that part of my entrance. And sure, she does have a a much wider back and stronger back than most women, I guess. But it's not physically that impressive, you know. Like it's it, it's again, it's all, every time I look at it, I'm like, I feel like. Am I looking in the right area? Am, am I seeing something that she sees that I'm not, that I'm supposed to be impressed by? I, I don't know, but it is, it's, it's ridiculous. It's just the, the thing she does to show off her lats. I don't know. Again, not a, not a baby face move. Okay. So your, your comments are DJ. Here's where we see, might see the seeds being planted for the heel turn of none other than Raquel Rodriguez back dimples turning on live. And with that being said, I'm booking Ronda and Shayna retain the Undisputed Women's Tag Team titles. I like your uh, I, I like your pick. I'll just leave it at that. Roman and Solo versus the Usos. The Bloodline Civil War Part 1, possibly. This match right here is a tough one to decide because the match can go either way. Another highly contested, highly anticipated match, family versus family, that oddly has no stipulation. I'm going to say... Well, DJ, I think there's no stipulation because it's the first match in the series, presumably series. And when you have the first match, it usually starts out as usually starts out as just a pure wrestling match. And then it gets upgraded to, you know, no rules or some kind of other stipulation, no DQ, and then maybe a cage match or hell in a cell. I mean, not every match or every series formula is formulated that way, but I'm not surprised. It's just a pure wrestling match to start. It's it's just my take. Uh, So you say. I'm going to booking that Roman and Solo get the win via interference from Paul Heyman. Roman and Solo had lost at Night of Champions, so this is their comeuppance. And this is their redemption. Interesting to see where the storyline goes to next. Stay tuned. Really? Stay tuned. That's, that's a new one. The Men's Money in the Bank ladder match. I'm not going to mention the participants because I'm booking that none other than Mr. L.A. Knight, yeah, wins the briefcase. But he, who does he try to cash in on? You guys guessed it. Stay tuned. And finally, <clears throat> the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. I'm booking that. Hmm, this is a tough one. I'm going to say that EO Sky wins the briefcase and very shortly thereafter turns on Bailey. Have a blessed week and weekend. Enjoy Money in the Bank. DJ signing off. Peace. Nice picks, DJ. I, I, I will leave it at that. It's just, just nice picks <laughs> all right thank you all to all the patrons let's get to hmm mj from australia and mj says uh mj from australia ten thousand three hundred miles from albany new york <laughs> that is uh my god uh that's 
I, I did not. I'm, I'm guessing you Google mapped it. And, and that's that's just probably the flight path. Right. That's uh, that's insane. Quick thought uh, about the money, the bank, money, the bank winner, men's money, the bank winner and how that shapes up towards SummerSlam. I have to agree with Anthony DeMarco about Priest taking the win over L.A. Knight, mainly because of where you could go afterwards. But the only way Priest wins is if Finn also wins the World Heavyweight Championship. We all know WWE loves a visual of a faction with all the gold. They get a great photo op of Judgment Day coming out next week with the briefcase, World Heavyweight Championship, and World Women's World Championship. Judgment Day have been saying that they run Monday Night Raw. What better way to hammer home that point? Here's the thing, MJ. You're right, but the problem is SmackDown. When you look at SmackDown, what is the dominant feature? Hell, what's the dominant feature in all of WWE? The Bloodline faction. You can't have two heavily fa- uh, heel faction shows that are overbearing by overbearing by these uh, by these factions. And Raw, they've tried to balance out with Seth winning the World Heavyweight Championship and him making sure that he's defending it against any and everyone, which, I again, I have said many times is ridiculous and, and devalues everything. But I think I'm in the minority. When it comes, uh, when it comes to that, I know uh, many of you don't agree with me. But um, all right. So... Um, again, when you have a dominant heel faction, I don't think WWE wants to do the same thing on raw. You know, I don't think they want to do that. I think you're doubling down on the problem. A lot of people saw with, uh, the bloodline and Roman reigns, but all right, I would agree if the bloodline didn't exist. (laughs) All right. We've been subtle or we've had subtle tension between Finn and priest and they even discussed the possibility of Priest cashing in on Finn if they both won. Priest laughed and said he would never do that. Hence, you have already made a story of jealousy and a potential enemy from within. You could add J.D. McDonough. Yes, you could. In a mix future, a mix in in the future and have a story until at least SummerSlam. Finn would be paranoid about a Priest cash in for months. That's po- Again, you're, you're, you're giving me a great story, but the problem is you're going to be having two massive heel factions with all the gold on both shows, it it would feel too much like SmackDown. I think Uh, you just Seth is the, the antidote. At least I tell WWE views him to the Roman Reigns problem of Roman Reigns complaints because Roman Reigns in and of himself, of course is not a problem. He's a cash cow to WWE, but how fans view it with his few title defenses going four months without a def- title defense. Now, uh, you know, they, they don't want that happening on raw. So, but JD McDonough absolutely could be, uh, in the mix here and him and priest could oust Finn, even without the title or money in the bank briefcase being involved. There's still a story here to be told. Also, as a loser of money in the bank, maybe screwed out of the briefcase by Judgment Day, LA Knight can continue to benefit from being the guy who's being looked over, go on an angry tear, and given he's so over, he could play a, a faux babyface to face Austin Theory for the U.S. title. The promo battle between those two on the mic would be gold. Week after week, both would benefit. Yeah, that's the thing. And I think Anthony DeMarco brought this up with me last night or two nights ago. That is that LA Knight is such a heavy favorite, and he is going to be heavily cheered in this match. I don't care what they do to try to get him booed. It's really anyone, but uh, everyone um, is everyone in this match is going to get booed, but night. I believe that. Um, But that said, you could tell a story where he ascends to the U S title and then works his way in to win the Royal rumble. What if he wins the rumble? Hell, what if he faces Roman reigns? I mean, it's not impossible. Uh, it, it, there is a big, there is an argument to be made, a strong argument to be made for Knight not to take that shortcut, but rather take a traditional path, have WWE get behind him in a more incremental fashion and continue to push him that way. Absolutely. And the more sometimes WWE doesn't push somebody, the more the fans want somebody to be, someone to be pushed. So yeah. All right. 
I'm torn on what this will mean for Seth, given he's only just won the World Heavyweight Championship, but a loss to Finn at th- at least frees him up for a shot at Roman post Uso Civil War, unless they stick to the brand split rules. But who knows? They're not going to stick. They're not going to stick into the brand rules. They have. I don't even know if there's been a week that's gone by that they have truly stuck to the brand rules since it was implemented. Not a single week. Whether it's Paul Heyman randomly showing up, everyone from the Money in the Bank ladder matches, the men and women showing up on opposing brands, uh, you know, it just it makes no sense. They can not, simply can not adhere to the brand rules. I, I, I cannot stress that enough. They have no self-control, no discipline, none. They want to say there's a brand split and then just completely violate the rules whenever they feel it's necessary to enhance the story. They want it both ways. All right. Thanks, MJ. Where are we at? Let's get to... uh, All right. King Scully in the house. He says he's representing the UK all day. I'm sure you're fed up of my intro by now. (laughs) I mean, I'm not fed up with it. It is what it is. I'm neutral. Um, All right, I got to say, I'm actually liking Ronda Rousey at the moment. I've never really been a fan of hers, but I like this version of her. She seems to be selling her opponent's moves very well. Her mic work seems a bit better, too. I mean, she she gets straight to the point and doesn't have have to say an awful lot. Her and Shayna look good as champs. Hope they retain at Money in the Bank. Even though they are unified belts, I noticed they only came out with one title each, which, as you say, is the way it should be. Yes, it should be. Yeah, I've said that a zillion times. And you know why why I think you're feeling that uh, she's improved? Shayna, that is, or uh, Rhonda? Because she's born to be a heel. That's why. She just, it f- just feels right with her. At the same time, the crowd is mixed with her. They don't know what to do with her. Finn Balor needed that promo on Raw, the video promo. The fans ruined his promo a couple of weeks ago, so it was nice for him to get an opportunity to express himself. It was decent. Like I said, I think that that video promo... Is a is better than if he if the crowd didn't crap all over that segment a few weeks ago and he delivered the promo he wanted. I still think this was actually more effective. It was very well done. I really loved it. Question: Why are Kevin and Sammy defending their tag titles on SmackDown and not Money in the Bank? I mean, all these title defenses on a normal show, it's getting a bit much. I mean, <laughs> dude, don't set me off. This has been and will continue to be something I do not forgive. I don't mind on occasion that it happens on a special event or a special edition of SmackDown or Raw. But here's the thing. When you get to the point when if you polled the average fan how special it feels that there's a title defense of any kind on Raw or SmackDown and they'll tell you it doesn't feel that special, like on a 1 to 10, they'd probably say it You know, it feels like a, a 3 or 4. You know that you have overexposed and oversaturated the title defenses. They don't feel special anymore. It's like, then what are we doing with the premium live events? If you're not saving title defenses for premium live events, what are you saving them for? Uh, I I just, I'm, I'm not saying it can't ever happen, but it happens almost every show. There's some kind of title defense. I, I'm just going to leave it there because I'll go down a rabbit hole. I also have a theory, pun intended. It's no secret that I'm a fan of Austin Theory. He's a future world heavyweight championship uh, champion. I know Paul Heyman strangely called his U.S. title the United States Heavyweight Championship, which was strange. But I mean, he will be a WWE champ or world champ one day. At the moment, though, he seems to not be featured all that much, which means for me that he could lose the title soon. I know, uh, uh, I think I know who will cash in, too, if you know what I mean. L.A. Knight, yeah. As predicted, he will win the Money in the Bank lunchbox. (laughs) And I think he will cash in on theory. Thank you, King Scully. Well, thanks, uh, King Scully. And another uh, pick for LA Knight here. You know, put another uh, put another mark in his column. A lot of support for LA Knight. A lot of people believing he could win. And with good reason. You know, he is absolutely a heavy favorite. But the, again, the argument I made a few, a few minutes ago may, may sway some people. But... Yeah, that was a weird thing. Sometimes they add, you know, heavyweight champion to whatever the name of the title is. I think somebody even called the Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship on Raw. Didn't somebody call it that? 
sometimes they just add it for no good reason. As if there's a intercontinental light heavyweight championship or a United States light heavyweight championship. There's no weight class assigned to those belts. They just add it sometimes either unknowingly or innocently. But when you add a weight class to a belt, that's significant. And it shouldn't be done just to make it sound more important if it doesn't actually apply. All right. Let's go. We got Matt. This is Matt G. He says, I didn't mention the last time I wrote in, but I'm a big fan of your podcast and always look forward to the new releases I'm from Australia and hoping that WWE can finalize the deal for a pay-per-view here next year. Well, cool. I got a lot of people listening in Australia. I don't know what it is. Are you? Uh, is it Melbourne? I'll have to look at my stats. I can actually see where people download, but um, that's really cool. I only started watching WWE again recently after a hiatus of nearly 15 years. And my last live event was probably in 2006, a long time between drinks. Yeah. Wow. That is a really long time. The pay-per-view being discussed is on the other side of Australia uh, on the other side of Australia to me about 3,500 kilometers away, but I'll definitely be making the trek if it happens. Did I blink and miss two matches on this past week's episode of SmackDown? I thought Corbin versus Grimes and Bailey versus Shotzi were advertised even during that show, and neither match took place. I guess there could be a rational explanation for this, but I'm not sure a lot of us are thinking this could be Vince throwing his weight around making last minute changes. Well, uh, Matt, I have some news for you. Apparently, that is Vince. And Vince is actually trying to become more of a creative influence. So, what I guess Triple H and others are doing, from what I understand, Again, I'm not in WWE, but this is what I have gathered is that they're trying to Vince proof creative, meaning that uh, WWE is trying to the, the triple triple H side of things is trying to promote matches, advertise matches one to two weeks in advance because Vince is much less likely to change that given he has a very big belief that you shouldn't advertise something and not deliver it. So do you see what they're doing now? The it, Vince, apparently Vince did cancel those matches. Apparently that's Vince. And I say apparently because it's very difficult to know. We we're not backstage, but I, I, I tend to go with the side that Vince is heavily influencing here. So they're trying to Vince proof things. So it's, there's kind of a struggle backstage still. Vince needs to stay the F away. I respect everything he's done, but my God, bro, give it up. Step aside, please. Things were going great. Okay. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on the future of the Judgment Day. It seems like the faction won't be disintegrating anytime soon, and I don't think it is too far-fetched that each member could be holding gold, completely dominating the red brand. Rhea won't be dropping her belt anytime soon. As you've said a number of times, Dom needs some gold. It will make him even hotter as a heel. If that's possible, Dom and Priest take the tag team titles. The last few weeks have also breathed new life back into Balor's character. And while I don't think he'll win money in the bank, he is definitely a contender to be the next big goal uh, to hold the next big gold belt. Again, um, I, I'm, I'm, I prescribe to the idea of that, except I don't see. And here's the thing. When I just described the dynamic of what, bloodlines doing on SmackDown and why because of that they aren't going to do the same thing on Raw with another heel faction that doesn't mean I wouldn't do it I wouldn't want to do it in fact what you're prescribing to I would as well I like this I want the Judgment Day with all the gold tag titles women's championship Finn with the world title I would love it but given how WWE books and seemingly why they the, the purpose of why they brought the World Heavyweight Championship back it would completely, in their mind, negate the, the, the original intended purpose of bringing that title back. And it would make fans feel like, oh, it's more of the same. No title matches, heels hiding, you know, none of that. So uh, you know, th- that's probably not going to happen anytime soon, given the bloodline on SmackDown. But also, had I known when I wrote in last time, that I was going to be scalded for recalling Survivor Series 2006, that I would have provided some more context. The HBK spot from 06 appeared on Facebook, ironically, two days before the episode of Raw. With the Rollins spot, I compared it 
two, I it aired. Uh, I, <laughs> keep up the good work. Hey, Matt, I really have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and that just comes from uh, my memory being shot. I'm trying to to think about it in my brain. What I I, I don't remember the, what what was said. Honestly, <laughs> I don't remember. You'll have to remind me again, Matt. I don't uh, I don't remember. If I scalded you, I apologize. I don't remember what the heck was being what was said. All right, where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, let's talk to Mason. And Mason says, just wanted to ask if LA Knight wins the briefcase. Could cashing in on Seth the same night in his match with Finn, could uh, could he win the World Heavyweight Championship? I mean, he could. I think that's going too much too, too, too much too soon. I think it's just generally too soon to talk about Seth losing that belt. As much as I despise how WWE is treating it like the 24-7 title that anyone gets an opportunity at any time, all they have to do is simply ask or just just exist as a human being, which is apparently the qualification, then, I, I mean, I hate it, but that's how they have presented it, and I don't think that's going away anytime soon, as Seth right now is being presented as the anti-Roman. He's there every week, defending it multiple times a week, where Roman's there every four weeks, defends it every three to four months now, right? I know what they're doing, but they're going too far the other way, in my opinion. However, the way that they're going with Seth, I don't think it's even into the discussion for Seth to lose the belt until, you know, as we get in, and really until January or so. Just uh, Well, maybe November, December, January, okay? It's just too soon. Also, is... Oh, I lost myself. Valhalla ever going to fight or just stand there with the Viking Raiders? Uh, probably just stand there. <laughs> probably stand there. And I'm fine with that. All right, Chandler, let's get to you. Or let me talk to you. How about that? One word to describe Raw this week. Filler. Not bad, but it seemed very filler. I genuinely believe that the women's Money in the Bank match will be one of the best matches on the card because there are so many potential winners I've always said predictable doesn't mean bad, but I stand by that unpredictably can add unpredictability can add a lot to match quality. That's it for this week. Thanks. Well, I don't think predictability or unpredictability in and of itself adds or takes away from the quality of a match, meaning the physical part of it, what you see with your eyes. It may change how you feel, I think that's probably what you mean because match quality to me, uh, you know, is from, from a physical standpoint is unaffected by predictability because you could have a super predictable, predictable match. But even though you know that someone's a heavy favorite and going to win, no matter what, they could still have a banger of a match and you come away going, that was a badass match, even though I knew who was going to win, you know? So I guess quality of a match is defined differently by different people. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to make that point. If predictability is part of the quote quality of the match, then sure to you, predictability will be a factor. All right. Anyway, I'm getting too deep. So yeah, the women's money in the bank ladder match does have some potential winners. I mean, Bailey, absolutely a, a contender. EO Sky, the heavy favorite, or I shouldn't say heavy, the significant favorite to win is EO Sky with good reason. You know, Zelina Vega, kind of the outsider with no no real. Uh, beef to grind with anybody, but starting to come into her own is a, a, a factor. Absolutely. Trish Stratus, eh, probably unlikely given the point in her career. Becky Lynch is the biggest star in the match, but it wouldn't make sense. I don't think for Becky to win, given that her and Zoe Stark and Trish are involved in this kind of little triangle deal, right? It, they got to finish their story. And part of that is not money in the bank. I don't think. But you're right. To your point, you could almost make a case for everyone. At least four out of the six women, I think. Zoe Stark, take it. I mean, Zoe Stark and Trish, you can kind of take out of it. But the rest of them, you could actually make a case. Thanks, Chandler. All righty. Let's, uh, we got, I think we got one more email. Yes. Let's get to it. This is New York Kyle. It's our boy, New York Kyle. First of all, before we get started, I hope everyone has been enjoying my Cora Jade report. Anyway, Money in the Bank predictions. Cody Rhodes and Dominic. I think Dominic shockingly wins by Brock Lesnar interference. 
Next, Rhonda and Shayna versus Liv and Raquel. Unfortunately, I think our boring champions retain. Gunther defending his IC title against Riddle. Gunther retains, but Riddle will look great in defeat. Seth defending the World Heavyweight Championship against Finn. I think Seth retains, but Finn will look great in defeat. Zelina, so so the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. I think EO wins with Zelina Vega being a dark horse winner. Shinsuke and Ricochet uh, and Santos and Butch and Damian for the men's side of things. I think LA Knight wins with Damian being a dark horse winner. And finally, the Bloodline Civil War. Um, this is tough, but I think Jay pins Solo Sokoa. That's it today. I have a surprise for everyone on the podcast when I get an answer from Matt because I sent him a DM on Discord and Twitter. Oh, well, wait a minute. <laughs> you do have a surprise, uh, but it's it, it probably will be a week or so. Yeah, anyway. So good stuff, Kyle. Thank you for the email. You guys are hammering me with predictions tonight. I see a consensus, though. I see a, a consensus forming. All right. <clears throat> I think that'll do it here for the emails and uh, the messages from patrons. So let's now change it over to... Well, let's get to it, guys. You know, you guys know what's coming. Do I even need to tell you? Do I even need to tell you? Let's get to it. The Veer Mahan Report starts right now. Guess what? This is DJ Kuzmo back at it again on your mailbag show. Record to you live on a Wednesday morning. And let's get to your favorite show to come on every single week on the mailbag. And I'm talking about the fear, the fear, the fear. The Veer Mahan Report. Now, the Veer Mahan Report took place this past Monday night on Monday Night Raw. But we did not get an appearance of the end this year. We did not get an appearance of my guy, Veer Mahan. We did not get an appearance of Sangha. We did not get an appearance of the modern day Maharaja Jinder Mahal. But they did make an appearance on a special program called WWE Now India and they were talking about potentially their future matches and their future feuds with some of the best and top tag teams on the main roster. Talking about guys like Imperium, talking about guys like the tag team champions of Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and hopefully maybe They'll go up against Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa at an Indian live event. Whatever the case may be, I am so excited for the end this year that right now they are 4-0 undefeated on Monday Night Raw and they are still waiting for their next opponent. They're, we are still waiting to see what happens after Money in the Bank, the fallout after Money in the Bank. As you can see that these guys, the end this year, go up against another tag team on the rise or they go up against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn for those tag team championships. Whatever the case may be. This is your guy, DJ Kuzmo. Have a blessed week. Be kind to one another. Stay with you, my friends, and peace. DJ, buddy. So, good stuff with the Vermahan Report. Yeah, I noticed that uh, they weren't on the show either, and it's it's not really that concerning, honestly, unless it becomes a pattern. But, to me, I'm looking forward to Money in the Bank or Money the Monday Night Raw after, because... I think there's a strong chance that they attack Kevin and Sammy. It could happen as soon as that point, and I'm I'm still hopeful. They may rush them right to that point. I I don't know if it's advised or not, but it's something to keep an eye out for. All right, very good. Thank you, DJ. Let's get to our next voicemail. Hey, it's Kyle from Baltimore. So I wanted to talk about the um, face-off between Rhea Ripley and Raquel Rodriguez this past Monday. When is call eventually happens it'll be it would have been next it would have been last Monday at this point but um when that face off happened I was like okay this is probably what's gonna happen for SummerSlam maybe if Becky's still gonna be, be tied up with Trish and all that stuff. I'm sick of this Becky and Trish thing feud anyway. I've said this a lot of times I think this is a waste of Becky Lynch and um we'll see but we'll see what happens. Um so so we'll see what happens between between that between uh, Rhea and and Raquel. The other thing is that I hope that I hope that um, when it comes to this the the um, champion the um, the fact that people want people are so high on LA Knight. I don't get that. Right. That's what I don't really understand why why that is. He hasn't done anything. He hasn't really been in a major feud since Bray Wyatt back at the Royal Rumble. He hasn't really done anything. 
So, I was, like, why is he super over after he had not having any type of feud? Why are people so high on LA Knight all of a sudden? Be just because of what reason? So, I like to know why people are so high high on LA Knight after him not really doing anything credible since this year started. It hasn't been in a major feud since the whole Bray Wyatt thing. So why is he super over? Um, but that's my two thoughts on this week, but that's it. This is my thought that. Kyle, this is going to be a fun one because it seems like you are not on the bandwagon of LA Knight or you just don't understand it. So I'll get to that in a minute. As far as the Becky Lynch dynamic with Trish, it's been, did you expect anything better? I mean, this is as good as it probably could have been. Trish is not known for great promos. She cuts okay ones to good ones at, you know, an occasion. I think she's, it's nice to see Trish as a heel. It's more palatable than Trish as a baby face. So that's part of it. And she's, she's also helping build new talent. She's helping build Zoe Stark, who's getting the rub and riding her coattails, whatever. So that's great. She's in the give back part of her career. I have no problem with that. So when you look at it from, well, I don't like this program, but it's helping Zoe Stark. You know, it's helping build new stars. We all like stars, but sometimes we don't like the process of building stars. Well, that's unfortunately just going to have to happen. So look at it that way. And I think this program is going to be over probably at SummerSlam. I think we have another month and then you'll get your wish and it'll be over. As far as the LA Knight thing, man. Um, so here's here's the deal. You're right. He hasn't won any big matches. He has lost many more since he became LA Knight than he's won. And he's barely gotten any promo time. The way they've booked him has been pretty underwhelming. But that's the point. Do you see what I mean? It's got a little bit of the Daniel Bryan factor. A little bit. Where the fans saw a star. They saw somebody they could gravitate and relate to. And WWE did not. And the fans said, okay, we're going to do this ourselves. And we're going to force you to recognize him as a star. And that's exactly what they did to WWE's dismay, I'm sure. Vince's most, you know, uh, most prominently, I'm sure. I'm sure Vince had some choice words backstage for the fans with no mic on. (laughs) I can imagine the things he was saying. They're like, this guy? I give you Randy Orton and Batista and you want this guy? Right? I'm sure he said those things out loud or in, in private. Anyway, it's a little bit of that with LA Knight, right? Because when when the fans perceive that someone is a star and WWE is not moving them forward, you'll hear from them. And the fans are gravitating towards LA Knight. Why? Specifically, you want, you want details? He's got a confidence on the microphone that's unparalleled. He feels like a seasoned vet. He does have a little bit of the attitude era attitude. And L.A. Knight, in a um, in a um, interview he did with Chris Van Vliet, who I've actually had on this show, good guy, he said to Chris that, you know, I, I think I'm presenting somebody that something that's been missing for a long time. And sure, does he have a bit of the rock vibes? A little bit. Does he have a bit of the Austin swagger? Yeah, a little bit. But it's not a total knockoff. He's maybe just adopting some of that confidence and some of that persona, a little bit of it, and that's resonating with fans. And he just, the way he delivers promos, the way he speaks so clearly and eloquently and and just confidently, he feels like a star. He looks like a million bucks. His music, it's not sing-along, but not every babyface needs to be a sing-along despite public opinion right now that every babyface needs to have some kind of, you know... Uh, some some kind of ballad that they can all sing along to. It's I can't explain it any way other than that. So if you don't like him, you don't like him. I'm not telling you to like him. I'm not trying to convince you to like him. I'm just trying to get you to reason to under, the reason I that as a supporter of LA Knight and feeling what other fans are feeling. I think trying to verbalize it is not easy, but that's the best I could do. Thanks, Kyle. Let's get to our next one. Hey, Matt, and uh, the rest of the podcast. So uh, first off. This this week, NXT Gold NXT Gold Rush Week Two. There's no core grade report because uh, she wasn't on the show. She was only on week one. I guess she, they gave her a week off pretty much, so she was not even on the show this week. So nothing to report this week on her. But I do have something else in replacement of that to talk about this week. That's uh pretty exciting. I'm going to keep it a surprise because I don't know if Matt's actually accepting it or not yet. So I'm not sure yet. 
like if Russia doing it or not yet because I DM Matt and um, I didn't get the okay yet, which is fine. I get it. You know, he, has, he has a busy, busy schedule. Um, so, so I have a big surprise plan for this weekend. I'm going to the bank weekend this weekend. Sorry, big truck is going past my job. Uh, if you heard that, um, yeah, big surprise this weekend for money in the bank. If if I get the okay from that, I'm gonna keep it a surprise because I don't know if we're actually doing it or not. I don't want to get people's expectations high for not doing it. So if if I get the okay, big now. I mean, Matt can say it if he wants on the mailbag. If he wants to say it, he can. I'm just gonna keep it a surprise just in case he wants to. I don't know if he wants to keep it a surprise or not. So if he wants to say it on the mailbag, he can. But if he doesn't want to reveal it, then I'm not gonna reveal it yet. I don't know if he wants to. But yeah, if it happens, get excited this weekend, guys. Um, I'll, the one hint I'll give you, it's something I've never done in the podcast before. It's going to be a first time ever. But uh, yeah, that's all for this week. I'll talk to you guys uh, maybe this weekend or maybe next week. Peace. All right, Kyle. Well, now you're making me feel bad. <laughs> you're making me feel bad, right? I think everyone can kind of guess what it is. We were going to bring Kyle on the show for the the review of Money in the Bank. The reason I'm not doing that is uh, because I don't like him. Um, No, I'm joking. It's actually because of my own schedule. Uh, He and I, uh, I don't want to give him a time and uh, not be able to deliver on it or keep him hanging. My weekend is a bit chaotic. As I mentioned, Uh, I'll be visiting a a, a relative and uh, I will not be of a state of mind to make sound decisions. It's a PG way, way of me saying, right, think about it. It's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit of a rough weekend. It's gonna take me a day or two to recover. That said, I'm still going to try to watch the show the best I can, and I'm still going to try to del- to deliver a review as quickly as I can. Now, is that gonna be Sunday night, yeah, or, or like a Saturday or Saturday night rather? Eh, <laughs> unlikely. Excuse me. It's probably more likely that it happens Sunday morning, uh, in, in my very rough, uh, excuse me, state. But that's that's my guess, and I don't want to be not at my best when I talk, especially or rather when I talk to especially a co-host. It's just not how I want to be. So because of uh, because of that, I want to be able to deliver a solid quality show with Kyle. So we'll be probably doing the Monday Night Raw review next week. How about that? I, you heard it here first, first ever, uh, Kyle on the show. All right. So there, cat's out of the bag. Let's get to our next one. Checking in once again, Rocky T from Houston, Texas. Today, I bring you the Roxanne Perez update. Last week, or essentially this week, on NXT, she was not featured in the match as we are in week two of Gold Rush. But she did have a backstage segment where she was attacked Attacked, oh, sorry, attacked by Blair Davenport. So, she's not in a title picture because of the gold rush. She is still kind of in a holding pattern. We will eventually get that match. So, keep a look out for that. But, the main reason for my call today is a special announcement. We have a very special episode 5 of Wrestle Magic that is in final productions as we speak. This special edition will include an interview from a pro wrestling legend, not just a pro wrestling legend, but a hardcore legend, a former ECW World Heavyweight Champion, and that man's name is Justin Credible. So keep a lookout for that. It will be posted. I will let you know in the Discord when it is officially posted. If you don't see it before then, you will. All right, everybody? Please, don't have a good day. Have a great day. Well, Rocky T, I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I didn't want to mention anything. Glad you did. Um, you know, i very excited to hear about Just Incredible. I got a text from Michael Gross, and uh, I heard that you guys were talking to him, and uh, can't wait to hear it. I, I was unfortunately unconscious, <laughs> passed out. Uh, not from any kind of inebriation, just exhaustion from the day and kids and, and just life. Um, but, uh, you know, you guys, I trust, did a great job. Sounds like a great dude. Um, apparently, there are some clips that uh, were supposed to be sent to me. I don't have them, Rocky. Michael says that I'm supposed to have them in my mailbox. I don't see them for intro, if you know what I mean. 
like, I guess Justin recorded some intros for some After Dark stuff. I don't have it. So <laughs> if you could send them to me, resend them. I checked my deleted. I'm like, oh, maybe I accidentally deleted them. I don't see them. So that said, if you wouldn't mind resending them to me, I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate Michael Gross, who continues to just kind of be my uh, my right hand man, and and really you too, Rocky. Who you guys are are doing such good work, and you know you, you guys are a lot of fun. So, um, well, I, as I say that, Rocky, that's actually hilarious. <laughs> it's almost as if the universe was listening. The moment I said that, you sent me the sound bites for Just Incredible. The moment I said it. So you can ignore everything I just said about sending me the sound bites. I got them. That is just, the timing of that is just nearly impossible. That's really strange. I'm telling you guys, I think we're living in a simulation. There's a lot of evidence for it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Rocky. Thank you, Michael Gross. Thank you to everybody. Thank you, Justin Incredible. Uh, you know, of course, that episode will be dropping sooner than later. Okay. Let's get to our final voicemail. Let's do it right now. Hey, man, it's just- this, hey man, it's Justin from Maryland. I know it's been a while. I uh, hope every, everyone's doing well. I had a couple of thoughts that I want to talk about before um, Money in the Bank. So first is um, Austin Theory. I'm uh, disappointed that he hasn't really been on TV. Um, he had like a little feud with Seamus and, and they had the uh, title match. He hasn't been doing anything since then. It's kind of disappointing that we don't even have the U.S. and the um, the women's title for SmackDown on the card. Um, I feel like that they could have did Charlotte and Oscar and Money in the Bank, but maybe they're setting up for a three-way because I think Bianca is going to get involved. But um, Austin Theory, I'm just disappointed he hasn't really been on TV much. Um, I definitely thought that, you know, him and Seamus were going to have a program, or at least he was going to uh, continue that feud with Bobby Lashley and then just go over. But I don't know what's going on. Um, What do you think that they should do with him? I feel like at this point, they'll probably just take the title off of him because, you know, it's just not really like, you know, it's just it's just time for him to just move on from the belt. But I'm not sure exactly who could take the belt from him. I have to be a baby face, but I'm not sure. Um, so I just want to talk on Austin Theory, and um, I was talking about Charlie and Oscar. I still think that Bianca might get involved, and they're going to set up a three-way. But I'm definitely, I'm definitely convinced that this is setting up Charlotte and Bianca one on one. I'm sorry, one on one, because you know we never really got that few on the main roster, and then they already had their little interaction. So I feel like this is definitely um, the end game of this is definitely going to set up. Uh, Charlotte and Bianca, and then uh, Oscar will probably go on the feud with uh, E.O. Sky. So next, I'm definitely enjoying the uh, the Bloodline storyline. Of course, I think Roman and Solo are going to go over at Money in the Bank. So I'm just interested to see, like, what's, like, you know, like, what the plan is. Like, are they setting up for Roman and Jay one-on-one again, or Roman and uh, Jimmy? I'm not sure. Um... I just know for sure that Roman's going to win, and then I think whatever happens in the match or after is going to, like, you know, give us an idea of, you know, where the story's going to go next because definitely – he definitely has to defend the title at SummerSlam. I don't – you know, I don't see why he wouldn't, but he definitely has to. And it's – it's I think it's only going to be either Jay or Jimmy or, or maybe Bobby Lashley, but I don't know. But I'm definitely loving the storyline. Um, I think my time's about to run out. I don't want to. I don't want to go over. Um, trying to think. Um, yeah, that's it. I was just oh, so close, Justin. So close, so close. But you got all your thoughts in. So very good. First of all, great to hear from you. I mean, it's it doesn't feel like an official mailbag until you're closing out the show. I got to say, there's just something about hearing you last. Mm-hmm. Not that I want to put you last, but you always just kind of fit into that slot of the closer, and it's been working so well, and it's good to hear from you. Okay. Theory. He hasn't been doing much. He hasn't been doing much of anything. And that win over John Cena that was supposed to propel him has done anything but. Again, aside from how he won against John Cena, which still is a travesty, they haven't capitalized on that victory. So where do they go from him? I agree. Have him drop the belt. Because there's too much, 
they added too much value to that championship. It did so many great things on Raw when there wasn't a world heavyweight champion before the brand split. And, you know, with with the champions and, and the belt and, and between Theory and Lashley and others that have held it, they did so many good things for that belt. It felt very important. And now it's starting to lose value. It's not being featured. Austin Theory doesn't feel important, you know, like he... He, he felt like he was on the rise, and now he's definitely on the descent. So do you take the belt off him? I would say yes. Who does it? Hey, you heard the answer earlier in the night. What about L.A. Knight? If he doesn't win money in the bank, why not have L.A. Knight do it? You said it has to be a baby face. Well, you can book L.A. Knight as a heel all you want. He's going to get cheered. He, he is a de facto baby face. L.A. Knight. I think you could do that if he doesn't win the money in the bank. As far as Bianca getting involved, yes, absolutely. I don't care what Adam Pearce said. I know he told Bianca she's banned from ringside. Of course she's going to show up. Absolutely. And it's going to be Charlotte and Bianca. I'm with you. I mean, I don't, I'm don't. i in lockstep with you about Charlotte and Bianca one-on-one at SummerSlam going on to uh, face each other for the championship. I think Asuka is – there's a chance she drops it. I'll leave it at that at uh, Money in the Bank. And then it's Bianca versus Charlotte at SummerSlam. You're right. It still could be a triple threat and giving Asuka another month and having a triple threat with Bianca and Charlotte absolutely is going to happen. But if EO and EO and uh, Asuka doesn't happen at Money in the Bank, or at least that's program starts, it certainly starts at SummerSlam. And maybe EO cashes in at SummerSlam. I mean, there's so many cool things coming up, guys. But yeah, those, those three or four women are going to be all entangled with each other over the next month or two months. Yeah, what's the end game, um, or what's the uh, what's the what's the the rub? What's the uh, finish of Roman and Jay and the Civil War and all that? Honestly, it doesn't matter to me who really wins this because it's the after match antics that matter to me. Because win, lose, or draw, what we're gonna find out, I think, at the end of Money in the Bank is who Roman's next opponent is, and if it's not Jay or Jimmy who lay out Roman at the end of the show just to make the crowd feel good, if they want to end it in a bigger way, what about Randy Orton coming out and RKOing Roman Reigns? How about that? How about Randy Orton RKOing Roman, who has unfinished business with Roman Reigns, given that the bloodline took him out at the end of May last year? Was it the end of May or June last year when before Randy went out a year ago? So... Sure, he still may reunite with Riddle. I think Riddle Riddle's on Raw, right? I think. I mean, I don't even know anymore. They just kind of cross people so many times. But he could still reunite with Riddle. That's still possible. But I think Randy Roman at SummerSlam is also a big match. I, I, I really do. Um, so that could be a possibility. Bray Wyatt floating out there again, guys. We're gonna go over all these possibilities tomorrow night with Thomas White, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna go over a lot of fun stuff. It could also could be Bobby Lashley, who has been also forgotten, right? As you mentioned, Lashley is floating out there in the ether. No path for him. I don't think he's injured. They just don't have anything creative for him right now. But what about that? What about Lashley versus Roman? He comes out. Either way, here's what I think. Uh, you know, kind of an early prediction, bit of a spoiler for tomorrow night. You're right. At the end of this match, the after match antics to me are going to be this talking the, the big story. Sure, the match between the, the the Civil War match is going to be awesome, no question. But to me, the most important part of this is going to be after the match, who comes out to fa- to uh, confront Roman to set up a SummerSlam match. That I think is what's going to happen, unless nobody does, and it's Jimmy, as you said, versus Roman. But. uh Good stuff. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you to the callers. Thank you to the emailers. As always, everything is much appreciated. All the efforts of everyone calling in and taking the time out of their day to do so is much appreciated. If you guys didn't do this, I wouldn't do this, right? So you guys are uh, the reason we're here. You guys are the reason we continue to make this show what it is. And with over 2 million downloads now uh, since its inception, we're just getting started. So if you guys want to go ad-free, Support the show at patreon.com slash WWE podcast. WWE podcast.com also offers ad free everything. You want merch? WWE podcast shop.com. Uh, did I mention Patreon? Yeah, I think I did. And also Apple podcasts. Click that ad free button right in the Apple podcast app to go ad free. Gets you a week free too. So if you want a week free 
of ad-free everything on Apple, and you're, you're an Apple listener, you use Apple Podcasts, and I think 70% of you do that listen to this show, click the ad-free button. Go get a week for free. I mean, if you want to you want to abuse the free trial, go ahead, right? You get a, a seven days for free, which means you get everything about money in the bank, the preview, the review, all of it for free, ad-free. You don't have to skip through the ads. So that'll be a, a plus. So I, I think I just told you to, to abuse the free trial. <laughs> Boy, I, I'm a great businessman. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I'll be talking to you guys tomorrow night with Thomas White for the official Money in the Bank preview and prediction show. Looking forward to it. Till then, take care. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE Podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.